good morning students hope all of you are doing good yes so welcome to this english one class today uh, we will be continuing with taro's reward i hope you remember the story so far that we have done paragraph 1 to 8 so we have done so far about this young taro who is full of kindness for his parents who is full of love for his parents he loves his parents too much and then he works hard and one day we see how his father felt very very cold and his desire for a cup of sake and then taro decided to go very early next morning to chop more wood so he could earn more money and buy some sake for his father so as he was uh, chopping wood he heard the sound of water and he went to investigate he went to see he thought the water is not in this area i have never seen water flowing in this area so he went towards the sound of the water and when he reached there he saw this beautiful waterfall and he as he was feeling hot after chopping wood he knelt down to drink a sip of water from the waterfall so as soon as he drank the water he thought this doesn't taste like water it tastes like sake and so he kept drinking again and again trying to make sure whether this was sake or water and then he realized it was sake and he had a pitcher with him and so he filled up this pitcher this pot and he took it home to his father and he gave his father to drink and his father was very happy he began to dance in the middle of the floor of the house of his hut and then after some time one neighbor came there and the father also offered the neighbor a drink of sake and taro told her the whole story about the sake and about the waterfall and this lady very quickly she left the house and by nightfall everybody in the village came to know about the magic waterfall which was producing uh, sake and not water everybody came to know of it till there we have done i think i hope you remember the story so today we'll continue we'll finish this lesson today i have also given you some question answers from the paragraphs not the textual questions from the paragraphs you have you will have to read the paragraphs again and find the answers it's very very simple you can do it and question answers from the book we'll do it next time but for today you answer those six or seven questions i have given you do it in your copies and don't submit till i ask you okay and uh, let's continue then with the paragraphs uh, 9 to 13 okay so in the last class we had completed about the neighbor lady who came to taro's house and the father offered her a drink of sake she drank that and when she came to know the story of the sake of the magic waterfall, she quickly left Taro's house and she went to the village. And by nightfall, by evening, everyone in the village came to know about that magic waterfall. So till there we had done last time. Today let us continue paragraph 9 to 12. That evening there was a long procession of visitors to the woodcutter's house. Every man heard the story of the waterfall and took a sip of the sake. In less than an hour the pitcher was empty. You see this is paragraph 9. So that evening there was a long procession. All the people, so all the people came to know about the magic waterfall and about the sake available in uh, Taro's house. So all of them came there and they had a long procession, a long line was there and each of them had heard the story of this magic waterfall and Taro and his family being very very good people offered each one of them a sip of the sake. So don't forget most of them were poor people and they had maybe never tasted sake. So here they were standing in line waiting for a sip of the sake and uh, Taro did not deny any of them. He gave all of them a sip of sake. And in less than an hour, not even an hour went by and the pitcher was empty. Remember the pitcher, the pot in which he had brought the sake from the waterfall, he had brought it home, that became empty. Now let's see what happens next morning. Next morning, Taro started for work even earlier than the morning before. Remember, previous morning he had gone out very, very early 
he thought that he would work harder and earn more money and would be able to give his father sake. So he had left very early the day before. And on this particular day, he left even earlier. He, went, he left the house even more early. So next morning, Taro started for work even earlier than the morning before. He carried with him the largest picture he owned for he intended first of all to go to the waterfall. So when he went to the went to cut wood, he carried with him one of the largest pictures that he ever had. And so because he intended, intended means he planned, he planned to go to the waterfall first and collect some sake. When he reached it, he found to his great surprise all the neighbors there. What did he see? He went very early in the morning. And what did he see there? He saw all his neighbors there. They were carrying pictures, jars, buckets, anything they could find to hold the magic sake. All of them had come to this magic waterfall to collect the sake from the waterfall. And they brought with them whatever they could bring, be it pictures, jars, buckets, anything, mugs, cups, all that they had which could carry some liquid, could carry some sake, they brought with them. Then one villager knelt and held his mouth under the waterfall to drink. One of the villagers, he knelt down. Knelt is past tense of kneel, kneel down. We say kneel down. So he knelt down at the side, at the, at the waterfall and he planned to have a drink of the sake directly from the waterfall. He drank again and again and then shouted angrily, water, nothing but water. Others also tried, but there was no sake, only cold water. So what had happened? This fellow, he knelt down thinking that he would take a big sip, a big gulp of sake. But instead of sake, he f tasted only water and he got up very angrily from there and he said, water, nothing but water. Others also began to try, others not believing him, they also knelt down and they began to drink from that waterfall and all of them tasted only water. But there was no sake, only cold water and this made all of them very, very angry. They felt that Taro had cheated them. Now, they were very, very greedy people. How do we know they were greedy? Because they came there very early in the morning. They brought with them all kinds of pots and pans. Now you see here, yeah? pitchers, jars, buckets, anything they could hold to find to hold the magic sake. Their plan was to carry home as much sake as they could. So this tells us that they were very, very greedy people. Okay, so now we'll move on to paragraph 11, 12. Okay, so they were very, very angry with Taro and they said, we have been tricked, shouted the villagers. Where is Taro? Let us drown him in this waterfall. But Taro had been wise enough to slip behind a rock when he saw how things were going. He was nowhere to be found. So all these villagers were very, very angry and they thought that they had been tricked by Taro. Tricked means cheated or deceived. In the book, it's given deceived, but another synonym for it can also be cheated. So they felt that they had been cheated by Taro and they began to shout and scream and say to each other, where is Taro? Let us drown him. They planned to kill him, to drown him in the waterfall. Let us drown him in this waterfall. But Taro had heard what they were saying and he quickly slipped away from there. Slipped away means he went away. Very, very quietly, he went and hid behind a rock. When he saw how angry these people were, his neighbors, they're supposed to be his friends, his neighbors, how angry they were and they were planning to kill him because they felt that he had tricked them. So he quickly hid behind a rock and he was nowhere to be found by these villagers. Muttering their anger and disappointment, the villagers left the place one by one. Muttering means speaking very, very unclearly just talking under their breath, just talking to themselves like. So they began to mutter their anger and disappointment. They were very, very disappointed. Remember, they brought so many pots and pans with them to carry home the sake. So they were naturally very, very disappointed. So they one by one, they began to leave the area, leave that place where the waterfall was. Taro came out from his hiding place. But Taro was still hiding there, so he quietly came out from there. Was it true, he wondered. 
was the sake a dream so he also began to doubt whether sake was really there was it a dream he began to think to himself was the sake a dream was it really there how is it that it is water now how are these people saying that it is water so he began to doubt he began to think that maybe it, it was a dream and there was no sake there after all he thought to himself once more he caught a little liquid in his hand caught here means took he took a little liquid little water in his hand and put it to his lips he drank some of it it was the same fine sake no it was sake he tasted sake it was the same fine sake to the thoughtful son the magic waterfall gave the delicious sake to everyone else it gave only cold water so this was a magic sake um, sorry magic waterfall and this magic waterfall gave sake only to this thoughtful son and who is that thoughtful son that is none other than taro so this magic waterfall had decided to give the magic sake or the delicious sake only to taro and to give everyone else it gave only cold plain water it did not like greedy people it saw the waterfall saw that these people were all very very greedy so he decided or it decided not to give them any sake he just gave them plain water to drink but when taro tasted the water it was surely pure fine delicious sake and taro was quite surprised with all of this yes he was thinking as to why the waterfall did that he thought he never knew that he was a kind person himself he was very very modest okay let's do the next paragraph so when taro tasted the water it was actually sake now paragraph 13 The story of Taro and his magic waterfall reached the emperor of Japan. Everyone in his kingdom came to know. Even the emperor, emperor is like the king of Japan. He also came to know about Taro and his magic waterfall. He sent for the young woodcutter. He sent for means he called. He told his messengers, "Go and bring uh, Taro to the palace." So he sent for the young woodcutter and rewarded him with twenty pieces of gold. for having been so good and kind and so this emperor he liked what taro had done was doing for his parents so he rewarded him with 20 pieces of gold for having been so good and kind first of all he gave all the villagers a sip of the drink and he thought about his parents he worked hard for his parents he would cut wood for long long hours in the forest trying to earn more and more money This is what the emperor of Japan had heard about Taro and so he wanted to reward him and in a way of rewarding him he gave him 20 pieces of gold then he named the most beautiful fountain in the city after Taro there was a beautiful fountain there in the city and he named this fountain after Taro he named it Taro fountain yes Taro he named it after Taro means he gave it Taro's name This said the emperor was to encourage all children to honor and obey their parents. And why did you why do you think he did this? Why did he honor why did he give a reward to Taro? Because he wanted to set an example. This was to encourage all children in the world to honor and obey their parents. If you honor and obey your parents, you will be rewarded. One day you will be rewarded. Honor and respect and obedience to your parents is most important for a child and this is what the emperor of japan liked about taro and this is why he gave him 20 pieces of gold as a reward that reward which taro got for being respectful and loving his parents okay i have given some questions please attempt those questions and the sentences